Hey, this is Carola with Metal Life Magazine. I am here on the phone with Daniel from In Flames. How's it going? Uh, it's all good. Uh, right now we're on a tour in Europe, so we have a great, great time. This is our uh, European headline tour. It's been run for six, six weeks, all around the continent, so. Awesome, yeah. In about a month, you're going to come over here to the States with OPAD. That's going to be a lot of fun for the Communion of Sirens tour. Tell me about, uh, are you excited to come back to the U.S.? I know you got a good crowd waiting for you here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been off for a while now. Uh, this is uh, the longest break we ever had during two albums. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, we're really eager to get out, get out on the road again. Uh and especially in the U.S., it's been a really, really long time. And this time we will uh, go together with our dear friends in Opeth, by the Swedish band, so that's going to be excellent. So we're really, really looking forward to that. Now, I also read something recently about how uh, the band is involved in arranging the, uh, the Gothenburg Sound Festival for the third year in a row. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually unfamiliar with that. What is, what, what's the band's level of participation in this festival? We, we run it together with... Uh, you are the guys, friends that work in the business. Um, and this is third year, I think, is that? Uh, and it's shortly after the, the holiday, after New Year's Eve. So it's just just a cool show. Two days in a club in, in our hometown, Gothenburg. And uh, we book bands that have something to do with the Gothenburg sound. I mean, it could be bands that are inspired by uh, the Gothenburg sound or, yeah, bands from town or whatever. So. I think that's awesome. Like, the more we kind of get into this kind of new era of technology where everyone's trying to find a way to participate more in metal, I love that you guys are taking another aspect besides just playing. Now you're being involved in actually getting together a festival and being kind of on, on the business, like, lineup side of it. And I, I've got to say I love that about uh, about how you arranged this festival. Well, uh, basically, we just do it for the fun of it, you know. Uh, we know most of the bands. I mean, we tour with so many bands and we know the bands from the scene. So it's, it's just a two-day party where we hang out with, with the bands, basically. So. That's awesome. I bet you're looking forward to that. I read some news that you recently breached the 5 million album stream limit on Spotify in Scandinavia. Now, I find that really interesting because often I don't hear about the benefits of streaming radio and, and bands who d distribute their music through these realms. So do you have a hard time complaining about music streaming radio when you seem to be doing very well with it? I mean, Spotify is a good, good service that we use a lot in Scandinavia, and uh, I mean, we get paid for it. We didn't in the beginning, but now we get paid for it, and I think I use Spotify, it's perfect. It's like a, the biggest library of music ever. So I use it, and it's very big in Sweden and, and, and the other Scandinavian countries, and it works really good, and the artists get paid, so. I, I don't see a problem with it, but I use it myself, so I think it's really cool. If you look at it, it's pretty expensive to buy a physical record. I think it's a lot of money, oh. and, uh, and this is a good way of letting people download or stream music without doing it illegal. Because I, I think people want to pay for it, but not that much, you know. And before, there were no really good services for it, so people downloaded it illegally instead. But now there are some really good, legit services that are working. I think it's really good. Now, I want to talk about the album Siren Charms, which I thought was... I, I thought it was very interesting. I had to listen to it a couple times to kind of see where you guys were going. But as I was browsing through some reviews, there were definitely your share of positive ones. But but nothing like Sounds of a Playground fading. In fact, it seemed that people were more prone to showing their negative side when it came to this album. And I was thinking about a lot of these reviews use the word experimental to describe the structures of song organization. Do you think that many of these negative reviews probably stem from the, the discomfort that people seem to have listening f to more freeform musical structure? We always get accused by some people every time we, we release an album uh, for doing this and that. But um, we, we don't really care because at the end of the day we do uh, music, write music that we enjoy to play. Um, and if people like it, that's a bonus. And we are really grateful that so many people are still with us and we gain more fans every time. And I mean, it's I know that some people won't... If you have a favorite band, 
And I, I think this is a problem particular with, with metalheads is that they get so comfortable with a certain sound of a band. For example, bands like Iron Maiden, you know, there's just a certain sound and a certain expectation that, that people have. I think so, but there are bands that sound kind of the same all the time, and that's fine. And there are bands that try to do new stuff, and we are one of the later bands, you know. And I, I, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that people, I mean, people might know that they don't really know what to expect we release new album because we always change a little bit every time so I don't know why people are still surprised that we try to explore new areas but I don't know yeah and I think also people miss the fact that you know it's not I mean, heavy metal especially isn't the, the, the type of thing that's made for consumers. It's made to go beyond the realms of, of pop music and things that, that feel comfortable. Yeah, definitely. I agree. As far as In Flames' career, um, where album production goes, I just find it very interesting that I'm sure you'll agree that the band has put themselves in many different environments and not really gathered different energies for all your albums. Like, I mean, you, you recorded at Studio Fredman for many years before you went and recorded in a house in Denmark and now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you guys kind of have your own studio that you've settled in now. So, to what extent has the variety of, of studios that you've recorded in kind of factored into uh, the different energies of your musical style? Yeah, we had, we had our own studio, but we sold it. Uh, this time we recorded uh, the album in Berlin, in the Hansa Studios. Okay. But it's the same there. We don't want to repeat ourselves. We want to try new things and that's why we change studio from time to time because we want to try new stuff you don't, you don't know how many albums you will report I mean we want to try different types of recordings different types of studios and stuff like that and I mean the choice of studio and environment has big impact on the album and the sound of course uh, definitely so that's I mean if you want to go safe you stay in the same studio with the same producer because then you know what you get but we want to as I said before explore things so that's why we do this it's, it's a bit more adventurous you know and that's fine again like you get a change of scenery and you kind of clear your mind and, and, and start new and I, I love that my last question for you before we have to go is I noticed that the band has been used in different sorts of video games, like, and you guys have done stuff with Guitar Hero and, and things like that. Was that something that the band ever meant to happen, or are you guys just fans of video games and you made it happen? Like, how did it how did it come about that you got to associate some of your tracks with video games? I don't know how it works. We're, I mean, we have people working for us, trying to spread the music, and that's a really cool way to reach out to to new audience. And uh, I mean, we like video games ourselves. Uh, we play a lot, so it's awesome. Do you ever get any I mean, feedback from fans who play the games and say, Oh shit, I heard your song on this and this video game. Uh, no, not really. That's what I heard of. Uh, uh, well, I would have if I didn't. Mean, it's the cool thing, especially when you are in the game that you enjoy. It's like, yay, yeah, that's our song in NHL, you know? That's pretty cool. If you could just go ahead and, and put your song in any video game, what would you put it in that hasn't already been out? Right now, on this board, me and Peter and Andrew who play FIFA 15, the soccer game, every day, <laughs> hour after hour, so that would probably, probably be the game. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys have a way to, to unwind. You guys have a long rest of the year ahead of you. Thank you so much, Daniel, for talking to us here on Metal Life Magazine. And we are going to catch you on tour. We are based here in Los Angeles, so we will catch you on December the 9th. Awesome. Thank you so much.